Hello, in today's lecture I am going to discuss about the oil connections. Before design of oil connections, I will discuss little bit about the advantages and disadvantages of oil connections. As we have seen in case of bolt connections, there are certain advantages and disadvantages. And according to the requirement of in the field, we have to choose a certain type of connections. Now, the design methodology of bolt connections basically two type of bolt, one is bearing type of bolt and another is high friction grip bolt. This two type of bolt has been designed and certain number of uh, examples have been worked out. Now, in this lecture, I will first discuss about the oil connections. Oil is basically a process of joining metals, metal pieces uh, by the application of heat and with or without pressure and different process of oil connections are there uh, as we see that is forge welding, uh, uh, one is forge welding, then thermite welding, then gas welding and resisting welding and then electric arc welding. Nowadays, uh, the electric arc welding is the most popular type of welding uh, has been seen in today's market. Now, coming to uh, oil coming to oil connections let us see first the certain type of advantages what we get first is as oil connection doesn't need any hole in the plate so there should not be any reduction of area that means the structure members are will be more effective to take the load. Second is the in oil connection filler plate, gusset plate, uh, connecting angles etcetera are not used. That means, the total weight of the joint will be less in such cases. Now, oil joints will be economical as less materials are required. So, these are the certain advantages. Another advantage is the efficiency of oil jo joint is more than that of the riveted or bolted joint because why efficiency is more because when bolt connection or riveted connections are used uh, we create hole and because of creation of hole the net area net effective area of the plate is going to be reduced and this area under tension will be less and therefore the capacity or strength of the bolt joint will be less compared to the oil joint. Therefore, the efficiency of oil joint will be comparatively more than the uh, efficiency of the bolt or rivet joint. Now, another uh, uh, advantage we look that the oil joint look better than the bulky riveted and bolted joint. We have seen that uh, uh, if we want to make a particular shape of the joint, we can make uh, by the oil joint. But in case of bolted joint or uh, riveted joint, it will look bulky because of extra bolt and uh, uh, bolt or rivet will be added. Another advantage is the speed of fabrication. In case of uh, oil joint, speed of fabrication will be much faster than the riveted joint and complete joint means complete rigid joint can be achieved through oil process. In case of bolted joint complete rigid joint we cannot achieve, but in this case we can make it. Then alternation and addition of the uh, uh, sorry alternation and addition of the existing structure is easy as compared to rivet joint because rivet joint is permanent in nature it is difficult to uh, add or alter the existing structure. Now, another uh, important advantage we got that no noise is produced during the welding process uh, as in case of riveting process and also the welding process requires less workspace in comparison to rivet and any shape of joint as I told earlier can be made with easy. So, these are certain advantages we obtain in oil joint. However, uh, it is not that if, uh, all advantages we will get there is no disadvantages. Uh, we will get disadvantages also. In case of welding joint, uh, these are brittle in nature 
and as a result the fatigue strength is less fatigue strength is less. Now, let us come to the disadvantages of oil joints. Oil joints are basically brittle in nature and therefore, it is means its fatigue strength will be comparatively less. Uh, this is one disadvantages and another disadvantage is that due to uneven heating and cooling of the member during the welding, the members may distort resulting in additional stresses. So, distortion may come and because of distortion the additional stress may come into picture. Then another disadvantage is we need skilled labor and electricity for welding. Say for example, if we want to construct a uh, structure at the remote place where the electricity is not there, in that case it would be difficult to uh, go by the oil joint. So, in that case uh, it will be better if we go for bolted joint etcetera. So, this is an, another disadvantage. Then there is no provision for expansion and contraction is kept in welded connection and therefore, there is a possibility of cracks. So, cracks may develop because of this and inspection of weld work is more difficult and costlier than riveting work. And another disadvantage is the defects like internal air pockets, slag inclusion, incomplete penetration are difficult to detect. So, well, uh, we are going for maintaining the joint year after year uh, when we go for inspection for oil joint whether it, is there any defect or not, it is very difficult to detect that because of presence of internal pocket, air pockets and other uh, voids etcetera, uh, it, is, it would be difficult and therefore, the stress man, uh, strength of the oil joint will be comparatively less because of presence of the air pockets. So, this is difficult uh, in case of oil joint. Now, coming to type of weld, uh, there are three types of weld uh, we have, one is fillet weld. Uh, fillet weld basically used when two members are um, lapped together. Uh, let us come to here, so, suppose two members are there and these are overlapped. Then when we are going to join this, we need to join at the overlap portion and if we see in the plan, we will see that these are say these are welded. So, this portion is this and this portion is this. So, this type of welding is called fillet weld means when two members are uh, lap together two members have to be joined in that case fillet member we can use and uh, in in case of fillet weld or I should say that in case of two members joined in a different plane then fillet weld can be used, but bar weld we can use when the two members are joined in same plane. Suppose this is a member and this is another member will be joining in same plane. So, in this case uh, we can provide bar weld and uh, we can fill with uh, oil material and it may have complete penetration, it may have incomplete penetration, different type of uh, bar welds are there, I will come in across later and uh, uh, according to the uh, process of penetration the throat thickness of the weld uh, will be defined and the strength will be carried out means strength will be calculated in that way. Another type of weld is plug weld. The plug weld uh, is required when uh, plug weld is basically a type of fillet weld that is necessary when two uh, members are connected together having a limited length of the joint. Say suppose one member is like this and another member is connected right and we have limited length. Limited length means here if we see that uh, length is this much. Say so, this is L1 and we will get this is L2. So, total length will be uh, available length will be here 2 into L1 plus L2 total length and suppose the force is the force along the joint is so high that the required length L r 
requirement of length L is much more than the available length L. So, in this case what will happen? Uh, we have to adjust the total length in between. So, what we can do? We can make a slot here. We can make some sort of slot here and we can provide weight. So, in this way we can uh, increase the length of the weld joint by the insertion of slot. So, this is how one can make adjustment of the uh, additional length with the insertion of slot. So, these are the three types of weld will come across. Now, I will quickly uh, show some basic type of welds and their symbols. Symbols means in drawing we cannot draw this, we uh, will not be able to draw this in the drawing. So, what we do? We use some symbol that means, if we use certain symbol like this then it means that this is fillet weld. Similarly, uh, regarding bar weld if a square bar weld is uh, jointed means if a square bar weld is used then in the drawing uh, we use this parallel line two parallel line. So, that means when parallel line is there that means we understand that this is a square bar. Similarly, single V bar joint uh, if we write V that means it is a single V bar joint where joint will be like this. Again if we come to double V bar joint it will be like an X. When joint is single U bar uh, we will make a symbol like this. So, in case of double U bar joint its symbol will be like this. In case of single V bar joint its symbol will be this. So, different symbols we use for different type of uh, weld uh, in the drawing sheet. So, we have to know that uh, what symbols are given in the drawing and what does it mean. Similarly, double V, uh, double bevel bar joint, single J bar joint, double J bar joint we can also use in terms of its symbol. Now, shape of the weld when it is flat uh, its symbol is like this, when it is flat its symbol is like this and when convex its symbol we use like this and when convex we use symbol like this. So, coming to fillet weld we have seen three type of weld uh, we use one is fillet weld then bar weld and then slot weld. So, first we will discuss the fillet weld uh, its different uh, parameters uh, and then we will see the design methodology for fillet weld joint then we will go for bar weld joint and uh, finally, we will go for slot weld joint. So, in case of fillet weld as we know that when two lab plates are to join fillet weld is generally used and in case of fillet weld we know that uh, these terms will be used in case of fillet weld. So, what is the size of fillet weld? How do we define the size of fillet weld? This we will discuss. Then what is the throat of fillet weld? Throat and or throat thickness of the fillet weld. Then effective length of fillet weld. We know the length of fillet weld, but what is the effective length? Then another term we use in fillet weld is end return, then overlap, then side fillet, intermediate fillet, single fillet weld and permissible stress and strength of fillet weld. We have to find out what is the permissible strength of fillet weld. So, these terms will be frequently used in case of fillet weld design. So, we need to know one by one about the term of this means uh, terms of fillet oil different terms of fillet oil. So, I was about to tell that means I was telling the size of the oil. So, if we see here that uh, the two uh, members are joined together and by the application of it then this will be the fusion zone where the members are joined. 
Now, this portion this is the portion which is called root. So, from root to toe the length is called leg and this will be the size this will be the size of the weld this leg and this is the weld face and some we will see that some extra deposit are there means if we make a straight line from this toe to this tire we will see this is the extra deposit which is called reinforcement right. So, size of the weld if we define uh, we can say that the sides containing the right angle of the fillet weld are called leg. I have shown in the figure uh, then the size of the weld is specified by the minimum leg length. The length of the is the distance from the root of the weld to the toe of the weld measured along the fusion phase. So, if we see that the size of the weld uh, this will be the size of the weld if we see. So, there will length here and there will be another length here. So, minimum of these two will be the size of the weld. Now, minimum size of the weld are given in clause 10.5.2.3 of table 21 of IS 800 2007. So, it depends on the thickness of the thicker part of the uh, member, thickness of the thicker part of the member. Suppose the um, two members are joined together overlapped. So, um, it may be of same thickness, it may be of different thickness. Now, minimum size of the weld we can define uh, on this basis that if the thickness of thinner part is up to 10 mm then minimum size of the weld will be 3 mm. Similarly, from 10 to 20 mm if thickness of thicker part um, is existing then minimum size of the weld will be 5 mm. Similarly, 20 to 32 it will be 6 mm and so on. So, these details are given in table 21 of the uh, IS 800 2007. So, we can use that while designing the uh, fillet weld. Now, few things we have to remember like when the minimum size of the fillet weld is greater than the thickness of the thinner part, the minimum size of the weld should be taken as the thickness of the thinner part. So, minimum size cannot become more than the thickness of the thinner part. Then when the thicker part is more than 50 mm thick special precaution like preheating etcetera will be taken care. And as per clause 10.5.2.1 for deep penetration wells where the depth of penetration beyond the root run is a minimum of 2.4 mm the size of the fillet weld is minimum leg size plus 2.4 mm. And this is about the minimum size of the fillet weld. Now, the maximum size, maximum size also defined in the code that is the thickness of the thinner part minus 1.5 mm, it can go up to that. That means, the thickness of the thinner part we know and the maximum size we can become that thickness of the thinner part minus 1.5 mm. Similarly, in case of angle, the maximum size of the fillet will be 3 fourth of the nominal thickness of the angle. Now, I will come to a um, Now, I will discuss about the effective throat thickness as I told one is size of the weld. So, if we see if we make a diagram that this is the size of the weld and this is the this is root and from root to toe is the size of the weld and if 
size of the weld in different direction is same then we can write s or the minimum of that. Now, extra deposits happens here which is called reinforcement and this extra deposits we provide uh, to increase the efficiency of the um, joint. Now, if, uh, if we give a name say suppose A, B, C. Now, from root to perpendicular distance to the hypotenuse will be the thickness of the weld. So, if this is D, then the thickness of the weld, the throat thickness will be B D, where the size will be B C or A B. Now, how to find out the relation between T and S? So, we can see here that uh, in triangle A B C, we can write that A B square uh, no, 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 in triangle A B D, if we write in triangle A B D, A B square will be A D square plus B D square. So, from this we can find out B D is equal to root over A B square minus A D square, right. So, now A B is nothing but A B we can write as s. So, this is a square minus a d, a d is a c by 2, right. So, we can write a d as s by root 2, right, because a d is a c by 2, a c means square root of a b square plus s square that means s square plus s square that means root 2 s root 2 s by 2 that means s by root 2. So, a d we know s by root 2. So, from this we can find out uh, the value of b d. So, if we see so finally, we can find out the value of b d as s by root 2 right that means the throat thickness t can be made s by root 2 that means 0 0.707 s or we can write 0 0.7 s. So, we can find out in this way the relation between the throat thickness and the size of the weld. Uh, if the size of the weld is s then the throat thickness will be the 0 0.707 s. Now, this is true for uh, right angle triangle. If it is right angle then fine, we can find out this relation, but what will happen about different angle means if it is joined like this, it is not right angle right. So, in this case what will happen? So, that is defined in code that is in clause 10.5.3.1 of IS 800. Uh, it is told that uh, the throat thickness shall not be less than 3 mm and generally not exceeding 0 0.7 t or 1 t under special circumstances, where t is the thickness of thinner plate. This is about the uh, throat thickness, but what I was telling uh, uh, earlier that the t throat thickness will be uh, with some constant into s that means, throat thickness if t is the throat thickness and s is the thickness of the uh, weld means size of the weld then k uh, and k is the constant depends upon the angle between fusion phase. That means, if fusion phase is like this then uh, this k cannot become 0 0.707 s right. So, what will be this value that is given in the IS 800 in a tabular form it is given which I am showing here in table 22 of IS 800 2007 table 22 of IS 800 2007. So, in clause 10.5.3.2 we will see that the value of k will be 0 0.7 if angle between fusion phase is 60 to 90 degree. 
Similarly, for 91 to 100 degree, the value of k will be 0 0.65, 101 to 106 degree, it is 0 0.6, like this 0 0.55 and 0 0.5. That means, the maximum value is 0 0.7. So, maximum value of k uh, is 0 0.7, which is uh, which becomes uh, when angle of be uh, angle between fusion phase is 60 to 90 degree from 60 to 90. If it is more than that, then the value of k will be reduced. So, we have to take the value of k from this table. Now, coming to effective length. So, effective length can be find out from the area of the weld for which specified size of the effective throat thickness of the weld exists. So, effective weld, effective length we can calculate means when we are going to make welding say suppose we have a length this much, then if we say this is effective length then total length will be L plus 2 s total length and if, he, if it is this is effective length. So, why 2 s means we assume that means we consider that the uh, strength will be carried out by the uh, length which is called effective length, but we have to provide little more in two side to make sure the strength is being carried out by this L e. So, the total length will make little higher right and this effective length should not be less than 4 times the size of the weld. That means, minimum effective length should be this L minimum has to be greater than 4 s, where s is the size of the weld. So, this we have to follow. Now, coming to the design strength of fillet weld. Uh, when we are going to calculate the strength of the fillet weld joint, we have to find out what is the uh, permissible strength of the joint and permissible strength, permissible stress into the effective area will be the permissible strength or permissible force of that joint. So, that can be calculated from this formula which is given in the IS 800 that is uh, P d w is equal to a few l w t e by root 3 gamma m w, where p d w is the design strength of fillet weld and a few is the ultimate stress of the weld, ultimate stress of the weld a few l d w is the length of the weld which is called effective length not the total length and t e is the effective throat thickness which is 0 0.7 s effective throat thickness. Now, gamma m w is a partial safety factor, this may be 1.25 for shop welding and we can consider 1.5 for site welding, gamma m w. Gamma m w is a partial safety factor for weld connection and this value can be taken as 1.25 for shop welding and 1.5 for site welding. Then S is the size of weld, S is the size of weld that S we can find out means T can be find out from S by root 2 or from K by K into S. Uh, value of K can be found from the table as given in the code. So, we can calculate the design strength of fillet weld from this formula P d w is equal to a few L w T e by root 3 gamma w. Basically, a few by root 3 gamma m w is the permissible stress in the weld into area, area is L w into T e, this is the effective area right and this is the permissible stress in the weld F u by root 3 gamma m w. Now, if we go to the design procedure, we will see that first what we have to do, we have to assume a size of the weld. Suppose, you are going to design a weld joint, we have been given a particular load. Then what we can do? Either if we see 
that the length is constant means uh, we have a certain length then we can find out the what will be the throat thickness of the weld and size of the weld. In other way also we can do uh, we can fix the size of the weld from the maximum and minimum criteria and then we can find out the effective length LW and then the total length right. So, one way we can do that uh, first we can make uh, we can assume size of the weld based on thickness of the member then by equating the design strength of weld to external factor load the formula which I have, I have given in last slide uh, the effective length of weld is calculated. If length exceeds 150 T e then we have to reduce the design capacity of weld uh, as prescribed in clause 10.5.7.3 and is as given below right. So, that reduction factor will be beta L w that is given by this formula that is 1.2 minus 0 0.2 L j by 150 into T e where L j is the length of joint in direction of force transfer length of joint in direction of force transfer and T e is the throat thickness of the weld. So, from this we can find out the reaction factor beta L w and if the length of joint exceeds 1.150 T e then we have to multiply with this factor to find out the actual strength. Then another thing is n returns of length equal to twice the size of the weld are provided at each end of the longitudinal fitted weld. What is that? Let us come to that slide. This is called end return. That means when the length of joint is is this, then we have to provide a end return of this value, and that is 2s. So this return, this is 2s, right? So if we provide in the weld in this direction and this direction and it is if it is extended up to the corner then we have to extend up to 2 s more which is called end return. And another thing we have to remember that is overlap. The overlap of a lap joint should not be less than 4 times the thickness of the thinner plate or 40 mm whichever is less. This also we have to keep in mind while going to design. So, uh, this is all about the uh, calculation of design strength of fillet weld. Uh, we have seen that how to find out the design strength of fillet weld P D W uh, which is basically F u by root 3 gamma M w into L w into T e. Uh, F u by gamma uh, M w into root 3 is basically the permissible stress of the weld where F u is the Ill, uh, ultimate stress of the weld metal and L w is the effective length not the total length and T is the uh, effective throat thickness that means uh, size divided by root 2 or k into s means uh, depending on the angle of fusion uh, k value can be calculated from the table and from that we can provide the k value. So, this is how we can find out the design strength of the weld connection. Thank you.